Welcome to the Gato Engine First Person Shooter Project. I'm building an FPS from scratch in the Gato Engine. And today we're adding crouching. The goals for this video are to add a new input for crouching, adjust our player size and collision when we crouch, and fix some common issues like bugging out when uncrouching, adjusting movement speed, and giving the player the option to toggle or hold the crouch button. We're working directly from the last episode where we created a basic FPS controller. You can grab those source files directly from my GitHub. And if you want the source files for this episode, please consider becoming a GitHub sponsor to gain access not only to the source files for crouching, but for everything we create over the next year. To begin, we're gonna need two platforms, one that will allow our player to crouch and another that will be too low to crouch underneath. I've set my high platform to be two meters above my floor and my low platform to be 1.5 meters from the floor. Both platforms are using a box mesh and have dimensions of six by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 meters. You can play with the height here depending on your needs and the height of your player character. And if you wanna grab the material that I'm using for these platforms, you can do so by going to the FPS basic setup project in my GitHub. To get started on our crouch feature, we need to add another input map to our project. Head to project settings, input map, and add a new action. I'm calling mine crouch. Then set which key you want to use to crouch. Traditionally, this might be the C key or a control key. I'm gonna go with C. And already we have a choice to make. FPS games can use crouch differently. Some do it automatically. Some use a toggle key where the player can turn it on and off. And some use a hold approach where the player must hold the key. Now for our initial crouching setup, we're gonna be using both the toggle and hold options and creating a Boolean export variable in our controller. That way we can switch between both holding or toggling. First, let's create our toggle option. We'll add our first new variable is crouching set to false by default, which will be a Boolean variable that will hold our crouching state or whether or not we're crouching at any given moment. Next, we need a new function that will run whenever the player hits our crouch key called toggle crouch. When this runs, we'll check if we're currently crouching with our is crouching variable, first an if statement to see if we're crouching, and if we are, we want to print uncrouch for now. Then an else if statement saying if is crouching is false, i.e. we're not crouching, then print crouch. We'll replace these prints later, but it's a quick and easy way to check if our code is doing what we want it to do. Now we're using an else if here because we don't want to run both of these if checks every single time. If the first if statement is true, then the second one doesn't need to run. It only runs if the first if is false. Now we need to add a way to check when our player hits our crouch key in order to run our function. Like in the first episode for our basic FPS setup, we'll go to our input event function and add a new line. If event is action pressed for our new crouch input map we added earlier. If we're hitting our crouch key, then we want to run our toggle crouch function. Now we can run our scene and test our key input and whether we get our two print screens. Okay, printing strings is pretty cool. Actually, it's not really cool at all, is it? So let's actually add some code. It's time to make our player crouch. And while you could do this just with code, we're actually gonna be using a very useful feature within the Gato engine, the animation player node. The animation player allows you to animate any node and any property of that node within your scene. It's a quick way to make smooth adjustments to size or position and allows you to make easy edits later on rather than fumbling through code. Let's go to our player controller scene and add an animation player node. Clicking on the node will bring up the animation tab at the bottom of the editor. Here we want to create a new animation called crouch. Below our new animation is our animation track. This is where we can add tracks for different node properties that we want to animate. We'll animate with something called keyframes or a point where we save a value for our property. Let's try adding our first property track. Click on our collision shape 3D node and you should notice these keys in our inspector. These mark properties that we can create keyframes for. We wanna open our capsule shape mesh and create a keyframe for our height property. Click the key and create a new track. 
We now have an animation track for our height property under our collision shape 3D node and a keyframe with our height value. Repeat this process for the position of our collision shape 3D node and for the position of our camera controller node. Your track setup should look something like this. Also be sure that your keyframes are in the very first frame. Above our tracks, we have our animation time in seconds and far to the right, our setting for animation length. We'll set our animation length to one second. I wanna use one second because it creates a round default animation time to use because we can always adjust our animation speed with a variable within our script. With our animation time set, let's add our second set of keyframes at one second for each property track. My collision shape 3D height will go to 1.5 meters, the Y position to 0.75 meters, and my camera control Y position to one meter. With the keyframes added, you should now be able to play or sweep your track to see the controller animate or crouch it. I also like to change my interpolation mode to cubic instead of linear for smoother movement. You can add more keyframes to change your crouch animation if you wish as well. With our crouching animation ready, we can go back to our toggle crouch function and run our animation when we hit our crouch key. First, we need to add a reference to our animation player node. We'll use the export node technique and manually select our node here. Then in our toggle crouch function, get our animation player variable and run the play function with these parameters. The first sets which animation we want to use. Here we are using our new crouch animation. We'll place it here for when we are not crouching so we can test it right away. Now when I press the crouch key, our camera and player controller run our crouching animation. Let's go back to our script and add another variable for our crouching speed we talked about earlier. This number will be used to adjust our playback rate for our animation. I've set a range of five to 10, adjusting by 0.1 and a default of seven. So our animation will run seven times faster. Then back to our toggle crouch script, we'll add a third parameter, our playback speed, to equal our crouch speed variable. Now when we run our scene again, our crouch animation is much faster. So let's go add our uncrouch animation right now. The code for this is almost exactly the same, except we'll use our crouch speed times negative one. This makes our animation play backwards. Then a final parameter, whether we want the animation to start from the end to true. You'll now be able to crouch and uncrouch at will using both animations. Now that we have our player crouching, we have to work that feature into the environment. We can already crouch and move underneath low objects now with our collision setup, but if we uncrouch while underneath, we'll start to bug out. Our player character will want to stand up, but the collision mesh activates, so we get this jittering effect. We need to check whether we are underneath an overhang or ceiling, then deactivate our uncrouch animation until we can safely uncrouch. So to do this, we need to use a cast. Now, a lot of tutorials use a ray cast in the center of the controller, but this can actually cause a lot of bugging out along the edges of an overhang. The proper way is to use a shape cast 3D node, which will cast along a single vector like a ray cast, but we'll do it in all three dimensions. This will ensure that we check the full area of our controller and not just one single point. First, we add a shape cast 3D node to our player controller. We want it to be independent of our other nodes and we'll animate its position in the animation player. We'll use a sphere shape, set our target position to 0.5 and our position to 1.5. And you can also change the debug color if you want. Then in our script, we can get a reference to our shape cast via an export variable. This code allows us to simply select a node via dropdown rather than grab it in our code, and it's a much cleaner way to reference nodes. Checking for whether we're gonna hit a ceiling if we uncrouch is actually pretty simple. Head to our toggle crouch function and where we toggle our crouching off. We can add another argument to our if statement. This means we will only uncrouch if we, one, are currently crouching, and two, if our shape cast is not going to collide with something overhead. If either of those are not true, then we don't uncrouch. We also have one line of code we need to add to fix any possible bugging. We want to do a collision check with our shape cast against the environment, but not ourselves. The player controller can cause the collision check to be true, so we need to make our player controller an exception. 
so our shapecast will ignore it. You can do this by adding this line in our ready function, so that when the script runs, we add our player controller character body 3D node as an exception. Here you can actually just drag the node to get the reference, and since this is the parent node, I'm not worried about finding or changing it later. And now we can crouch and uncrouch safely underneath objects. But we have an issue with our crouching state being toggled on again when crouching, so let's change how we determine our crouching state. What we want is to only change our crouching state when our crouching animation has started playing, rather than when we press our crouch button. We can send a signal from our animation player node when an animation starts, then check if that animation is our crouch animation. And if it is, flip flop our crouching boolean. Then we delete our previous method above. But you'll notice that we can jump while crouched, which we don't want. Some games actually do let you crouch jump, so you can keep this in if you want, but we want to disable jumping if we are crouched for now. In a future episode, we might make it so that jumping while crouched makes you uncrouch or get a higher jump or something similar, but for now, we'll disable it. In our player controller script, we find our input jump function and like we did for our crouch check, add another part to our if statement where we check if we are currently crouching. We only want to jump if we are not crouching. So our toggle version is actually done, but we're also adding a hold the button version for our crouch, and you and your players can decide which you want later on. We've actually done most of the hard work already, so there isn't much to add. First, let's add another export variable called toggle crouch. This will be a boolean variable represented by a checkbox in the editor, where we can either use the toggle version if true, or the hold version if false. Next, we'll add some more event checks in our input function. First, we'll run our crouch function if we press our crouch key. We are not currently crouching and if we're on the floor. We'll also want to check if we're in hold mode, so toggle crouch should be false. If all of those are true, then we crouch. And since we're going to be crouching and uncrouching in multiple places in our script, let's create one function that we can use everywhere. We can use this function here to run whenever we crouch or uncrouch, we pass a boolean parameter as our variable state, then match true for when we want to crouch, and false when we want to uncrouch. Now we can just run this function with either a true or false anywhere in our script. Then add another where we check if we've released the crouch key or if we are not in toggle crouch mode. This represents when the player releases the crouch key. And if true, we run our crouching function as false. You should now be able to uncheck your toggle crouch option in your player controller variables and then use the hold crouch version when running the scene. But we still have to deal with the uncrouching underneath objects issue. And this is a little more complicated because the player could rapidly press and release the crouch key, so we need a really solid way to check and reduce possible bugs. My solution is to run a check whenever the player releases the crouch button to uncrouch. If our shape cast from before is not colliding, it means there is nothing above the player that would prevent them from standing. So we run our uncrouch function, crouching false. But if we uncrouch and there is something above us, our crouch shape cast as colliding is true. Then we need to do some more work in a new function, uncrouch check. Our uncrouch check function will keep checking whether we are colliding with something overhead. If we are not colliding, then run our uncrouch function. If we are colliding, first wait 0.1 seconds, then run our check again. This line here is a great way to add a short delay to your code. We could run this in our process function every frame, but it's really overkill to be checking for that collision that often. And if we can do the same thing with less frequent checks, you do it because it's taking less system resources i.e. it's optimized. Now when we uncrouch underneath an object, it won't uncrouch until we are safely away from hitting our head. Okay, so our crouching is working pretty well at this point, but when you crouch, you don't move the same speed as when you're upright. So let's add a little extra spice by adjusting our movement speed when we're crouched. 
We'll adjust our speed setup with three new speed variables, a customizable default speed value, customizable crouch speed value, and a speed variable that will hold our speed. Our default speed will be five and our crouch speed will be slower at two. You can choose whichever values work best for your game. Then within our movement code, let's replace our old speed variable with our new underscore speed variable. And within our ready function, set our speed variable to equal our speed default value. So whenever we start our game, we'll move at the default speed. Then we'll add another function called set movement speed, which will take a string parameter called state. Here, we'll use this function whenever we want to change our movement speed and then match our state parameter to either default, which will equal our default speed, or crouching, which will equal our crouching speed. You can run different functions for each, but this is a really tidy way to do the same thing, adjust our speed using the same function. We just need to alter the parameter when we run it. With our set movement speed function, let's go to our crouching function, where we'll run the set movement speed function when we switch between crouching and uncrouching. If crouching is true, then we'll set our movement speed to crouching, and if false, back to default. These strings just reference the options we set in our match. You should now be able to run the scene and crouch and uncrouch with toggling or holding, see it affect your movement speed, and not bug out when crouching under objects. If you would like to support this FPS tutorial series, you can become a GitHub sponsor using the link in the comments. As an elite sponsor, you get full access to the source files for every single tutorial along the way, including this one. You'll also get access to the private Discord, recognition in the README file, and help determine what FPS gameplay mechanics get covered in the future. A big thanks to my very first sponsor, and that is so awesome, so thank you very, very much. You rock. And as always, thanks for watching, and keep creating. Crouching is just effectively a squat. Just imagining crouching for 30 minutes kind of suck.